Hello friends, welcome to 3 to 4 Zero Times. We talk with a person who has started his life from ground and taken his wisdom to a certain level. Let us welcome in today's 3 to 4 Zero Times. Let's talk with Tenzing Bodosa from Assam. Welcome Tenzing to today's show. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, it's nice been connecting with you, Tenzing. Uh, let me introduce myself. I am Rotarian Subhashi Strategy, the District Governor for 2020-2021 of District 3240, which comprises of nine Indian states, mostly in the part of Northeast Sikkim and part of Bengal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We welcome you to this show, 3 to 4 zero times. We will be having a yes. video chat with you and we will publish your this video in our YouTube channel of 3 to 4 zero. Let me connect with you and without wasting further time, my first inquisitive questions goes to you that you started your life from a very ground level and you have taken your entrepreneurship today in the global market. Will you please tell us in brief right. about your life's journey from an unknown village of Bodoland territory to this world forum? Sure. Actually, I was I was 13 years in Malaysian construction company. So whenever I was working there, I was getting a good opportunity. I have learned a lot of the new techniques, new ideas about the different type of missionaries and about the infrastructure. But uh, I was not satisfied with my life when I came back in my village. I have seen that when I came back, I have seen that people are, people are, I mean, stop. they are growing, they are farming, but they are big challenges. They are big challenges because maximum our farmer was growing the naturally. Villager was farming naturally, but the nature is not supporting them. Nature is not supporting them, not raining in the time. It was very difficult for the survival. And a lot of the maximum farmers was growing like a conventionally. And when I observe many things that people are, people are now, our people are when born, in born, they are suffering lots of the diseases like cancer or the like heart problems, many newborn babies are suffering, I have seen. And every day, lots of the people are getting the lots of the problems. And future of the food is, like future is going to be suffering a very, very severe situations because of the food. Then I study about the, then I have to do something for the naturally, organically, and what I can do. But it was the big challenging for me, that how I can grow the organically. There was no any good trends in terms where I can train up myself. Then I start from the big boy rotary. This is that uh, there I found small new library organic demonstration center. I connect there, I visit there, and uh, Madam Peggy Kershwell, Fertile Ground, they help me loads how to do the organically, how to grow the organic food, healthy food. So I believe that future we need uh, to survive, we need a good food, healthy food good environments, so only organic or the biodynamic farming, oxy farming or the natural farming can bring the healthy food. So that's why I started the organic. Or, organic is the best way to save the nature, save the environment. I started joining organic farming last 14 years. Okay, okay, great. great. It, it is really great to hear that uh, uh, your journey you started uh, from scratch and you have proven yourself. Uh, attending, as you know, that Rotary is a service organization 
And Rotary right. is also very, very concerned about environment. Right. You always say that if you respect nature, nature will respect you. That's your tagline. Yeah. What makes you realize the importance of preserving this planet Earth and your action and Actually, we are human beings are destroying the nature and you see the every year the lot of the populations are increasing everywhere and human beings encroachment the animal territory everywhere. So destroying the nature. So if we will lose the nature, I believe strongly that we will lose the sky. When we will lose the sky, there will be no rain. When there will be no rain, then there will be no food. Then how we can survive? Then I start, we should respect the nature. And if we will only the survive, only the human being will be survive, then that will be not a, if that will be the big challenging for us. Then I start to respecting the nature. And like whenever I was starting to growing the organic tea in my farm, I have seen the lots of the birds like different type of animal, wild elephant, um, different type of bird, deer, all wild animal when they came in my garden, I feel very peace myself. And we have to respect for them and we have to give them the speech. And I create own forest in my land. Well, from the mountain, all the wild animals came down from the mountain in my gardens. I have seen them enjoying in my garden with very peacefully, very happily. And when I observe them, I feel very peace myself. So we have to respect the nature, and the nature will respect us. Is that a very simple? I thought like that. And I'm growing for the wild animals, like elephant favorite plants, like bamboo, jackfruit, mango, different type of grass. And when all the elephant came down from the mountain, I have seen they are happily there enjoying in my garden. I don't have any barrier in my garden, not a big drainage I didn't mention. A big drainage in my garden, no any barrier, they can freely roam in my garden. I never used any fertilizer and pesticide in my garden. So when animals are very happy to see, when I feel very happy to see them and myself, I feel very peace. So we have to love them, we have to give them speech. So I'm thinking myself, we have to create in our land like own forest village forest, city forest. In the middle of the city also we can create forest. I'm thinking like that. In the middle of the city we can create city forest, village forest, own forest. Then we can we can get, I mean the atmosphere will be the hold up. I mean so we can get a fish. So we are now getting the poisoning food. I mean the, to survive we need a fresh air, good food, healthy crops. And that can be come only from the organic or the natural farming, biodynamic farming. So conventional farming is spreading everywhere. So we have to stop the conventional. So we have to respect the nature. We have to respect the, I mean, the nature. Then nature is a very powerful. Ultimately, when human and nature is fight, and the in the nature is win. So nature, we have to, nature is the very, very powerful. So we have to respect the nature. I have strong belief. Right, you were truly said that uh, in a fight between nature and human, always nature wins. Uh, Pending, I had one uh, question for you, but you have already answered my questions. I'm not repeating. Just to uh, relate that all you have answered, that I was about to ask you: You have, you are the owner of the world's first elephant-friendly tea garden at Kachariwari village in Udalpuri district of Assam, and. I was about to ask you how it came to your mind to have this, but you have already answered that. So let me jump into the next question for you. You were also Assam's first organic tea grower by which you bought Assam tea, which is already a famous uh, in the world uh, so far as Assam liquor is concerned. But this organic tea, you bought Assam tea in a new height in global market. Will you please briefly say, as how you are producing and, and marketing this organic tea in the global market. 
Yes, uh, last last means the last fourteen years I'm growing the organic tea, um, and whenever I, whenever I see in the garden, I feel it look like green ocean. It, it was look like a green ocean. But I was thinking I was not have any knowledge about the tea farming. In my in my generation in my family I was the first tea planter in my family and whatever I was this is the gardens multinational company garden mother tea factory mother tea industry when I visit I have seen the teas it's like green oceans but when I study about the tea then I found there is a 32 varieties of the tea plants are there and each plant have a different character different flavor different aroma so interesting but I found not a tea most widely used by the Assam Brahman is the chemical fertilizer pesticide and acid. And many other tea is the largest used by the people. And one time planting is minimum 200 years can be survived. So how we can be used highly chemical fertilizer? He was we are with us because uh, I guess changing is having little network issue. He is having that. Yeah, then we are back. Yeah. Yeah, then we can hear you. Continue. Yes. So uh, Assam is you know, maximum farmer. Assam is known as a tea land. And Assam, the most widely used by the tea farmer is that is chemical fertilizer pesticide. Then I have seen, and the tea is the largest pollution in Assam. So how we can feed the people with the poisoning cup of tea? Then I stop using the chemical fertilizer and pesticide in my tea farm, and I start to grow the organic tea. And it was the big challenge for me to grow the organically because there was no any organic training center where I can train up myself. Then I study about slowly, I study about the organic tea. And fertile grounds helped me a lot to promoting my product in Canada, USA, Germany, UK, and different parts in the global markets. And really, organic market is there, but we have to. We have to grow first healthy food and organic products, and there is a market. Then I started to selling my product different part in the global market. Today I'm selling uh, different part in the global market. My products. It's really it's very interesting to work in organic, and there is a good market. I have started that 80 percent market is the vacant in the global markets. So we have to produce it organically, and we have a 12,000 small tea growers. Among the 12,000 small tea growers in our, in our place, I was the first organic tea planter here. And man, many people are there thinking that organic, is, organic farming is not a successful. People are thinking. But I have studied that organic is slow, but we have slowly we can, of course it's slow, but it can be successful. And it can be the healthy food. It can. So organic is very... Now the many people understand why we need the organic food and people are coming now. Among the 12,000 growers, we are every year producing like uh, 11 to 12 grow green leaf in our land. So, uh, and maximum farmer are dependent on the multinational company. I'm thinking if we can grow the organically, then we can make it handmade tea and we can now the many sophisticated machineries are small machinery, efficient machineries are available. I can connect with them and they can produce one tea and they can sell a good market nationally globally they can sell their products really there is a very good market the organic product market is available there thank you thank you Tenjing. yes i, I can uh, see a, a visionary person within you that you have vision it my one question connected to your distance that you have turned your this organic tea garden 
into an attractive destination for international tourists. Right. What, what facilities you are providing there and how you are marketing this the ecotourism uh, with your this offering. Yeah, in a very remote place, in my garden is very close to the Bhutan mountain, it's a Himalayan range. And in the middle of the garden, there is a big tree, and the tree I built there, the tree house. And in the tree house, when the people are, I mean, the tourists are coming in my garden, and I'm providing them, the, I'm hosting them at tree house. And in the night, when the different type of wild animals, like elephant, Eco, deer, and different type of wild animal when they came down from the mountain, and people love to see, and people love to be, I mean, uh, enjoying the natural life. They are very peace and silent, and lots of birds, lots of different type of animals. It's very, it's, it's like a new paradise for the travelers, and it's very, people are like very much, yeah. So, uh, so changing, I, I understand that uh, tourism is a part of uh, people's interest and when people get such type of facilities and the nature in their hands, distance, people will be talking to. Uh, I just wanted to relate one thing, I do not know whether you remember or not. Three years down the line back, uh, in a Guwahati, that Vivekananda Kendra, uh, you were being fel felicitated by a Rotarian, and his name was Dr. Vivasda Spurukais. And Vivasda called me up even today morning also. He was so impressed about your success, about your journey. And in fact, he was one of the person who <coughs> has the inspiration of getting you into Rotary field. Do you remember that incident in uh, Vivekananda Kendu three years back? Yes, yes, I I was really, I thank him and he gave me the great honor. So it's really, um, many organizations that have given me the great honor, really, I remember. And it's thank you so much for giving me that opportunity and giving me for the great honor. Yeah. And uh, thanking, uh, I really appreciate your time. But I have this last question for you. We believe, we Rotarians believe, that there are Rotarians beyond Rotary as well. And as you follow service above self, Rotary's motto is also service above self. And we consider it's a Ved Mantra for us. <laughs> Will you be agree to promote the environment issues as an ambassador from Rotary District 3240 if that opportunity been given to you? Sure. <laughs> so yes, environment is now as you see the whole world is becoming the very very severe situations. If to survive, we need a fresh food, healthy. I mean the healthy environment. So only the nature can bring that. I believe so that we have to work for the nature. We have to love the older species, respect each other. And Rotary is doing the excellent that supporting the nature and environment. So this is excellent. Actually, I thanks to the all the Rotarians, I mean the member and supporting for the supporting me and and it's really I love the I mean the nature. It's very excellent. Excellent. This is yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Penjing. Thank you. Your consent if there is any opportunity comes, my team down the line will definitely get in touch with you and we can have a lot of uh, endeavor in coming days uh, while we both together working for that. Yes, yeah. thank you, thank you very much. And many those who are still now, still today, the different organizations are giving me the that I miss the owner. So I receive a, like a Global Entrepreneurship Award, Indian Top Three Farmer Award, Rotary International Award, Environmentalist Award, and like 10 to 15 award I have received already. And really I thank all those, I mean the organizations, those who are supporting for the environment. 
and uh, this is the perfect time to do for something for the environment. So please, all the I mean, sir, thank you very much for supporting and special thanks to the Rotary and supporting for the I mean, the environment and this is thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Pending, uh, for spending your time on a weekday afternoon uh, with our request. And I know there are a lot little challenges of internet issues. So somehow you have managed. We appreciate your uh, help and support to Rotary and spending this time for this interview. I'm sure your these words will spread to the thousands of Rotarians through our uh, production channel. It will go to the Rotarians, and I'm sure it will inspire a lot of Rotarians to get into track of in, uh, supporting environment. Uh, with these words. I thank you once again very much. Wish you all the best for your endeavor, and I am really look forward to work together with Tenjing Bodosa and Rotary uh, for the cause of environment. Thank you so much, Tenjing. Uh, Have a good day. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.